Well, you clicked on this video because you want to lose weight. And I have the answers for you. Coming from somebody who's lost 70 pounds in seven months, I've completely changed my life around. And I know the reason you clicked on this video is because you want to change your life around. I've been, want, I've been wanting and meaning to speak on this for quite some time. And this is going to be a different format from what I normally do. I normally like jump cutting and messing around. But this is going to be a different format. This is going to be friendly. This is a master class. So grab your coffee, grab your water. <clears throat> do whatever you have to do to be comfortable, to be ready, because it's going to be a longer format. Do your dishes, vacuum, clean your house, clean your car, whatever it is, because there's going to be some gold nuggets in here that I don't want you to miss. And I swear there is going to be something in here that you're going to be able to use for future use. But that doesn't make sense. So how I lost 70 pounds in seven months. Learn from me. Don't do what I did. Don't do, don't make the same mistakes that I did. I can't, I went from weighing 220 pounds at my heaviest. So when I was heavy, I was, I weighed 220 and in seven months I went down to 150 at my lowest. And this was at peak time. This is when high school, when I actually had lost all my weight. And it was actually really good because all my life when I grew up, I was heavy. I was always a bigger kid. Pictures on screen right now. I was always a bigger kid. I was always messing around. I was always eating too much. And I always had the dream and I always envisioned being skinny. I just didn't know how to or go about it. And if you're one of the same people like me, the answers are in this video. Do the things, don't do the things that I did that stopped me from losing weight. And one of the things that made me not lose weight was eating too many dense calories in a sense. Let's get this off. Eating too many foods with dense calories kept me from losing a lot of weight. See, when I would eat, truthfully and honestly, me to you, I would eat way too friggin' much. Like it'd be one pack of, <laughs> this is going to be a good one ramen noodles if you can't tell that's my ramen it would be a pack of ramen noodles and then i would follow that up with oh maybe you know what what does that look like i don't know what that looks like to you but that is chips i would follow that up with chips now here's the thing we need to find a way on how we can hack food because the biggest thing for me was i like to eat i like to eat food and if i wasn't eating food I was probably snacking. I was always eating food at some point in my life. And here's the thing, what most people don't think about it. Per chips, I'm going off of memory, 270 calories for, I think it's 28 to 30 chips. That's how many calories you're going to have for that 27, 30 chip range, whether you're eating Doritos, whether you're eating Lay's or whatever you're eating. But here's the thing, and Greg Doucette actually put me onto this, that I want to put you guys onto this too. Popcorn. This is my popcorn. You guys are going to like this one. Horrible. Popcorn, if you can get the Ovo Redenbacher Smart Pop, it's the green, it's not Smart Pop, don't get Smart Pop because it's junk, it's the Ovo Redenbacher Smart Pop, it's got the green logo, it's 100 calories per bag, and then you're saying to yourself, okay, well that doesn't seem like too much, but is it enough? Think about this for a second, would you rather eat 28 chips for 270 calories or would you rather eat two bags of popcorn for 200 calories? And I know this is commonplace to a lot of people, but some people don't know this information. Understand that what's going to leave you more full at the end of the day? Is it going to be the 200 or the 28 chips or is it going to be the two bags of popcorn? And most of the time it's going to be the two bags of popcorn that's going to leave you more satiated and more full as much as you might be a chip head because I know people who are chip heads, all they want to do is eat chips. All they want to do is have chips because they're addicted. They want the crunch. But if you can substitute the crunch for a different crunch you're still winning in a sense you're still eating popcorn you're still getting that satiating feeling but the benefit is you're only getting a hundred calories for a bag a whole bag of popcorn a whole bag of popcorn think about how freeing that is in your diet to say that i can eat a whole bag of popcorn or two or three whole bags of popcorn for the price of 30 chips some people eat if you can sit here and tell me that you can eat 30 chips and be satisfied, well then I applaud you, but I highly doubt that you're eating 30 chips going, oh, I'm satisfied. No, you're reaching in the bag. You're getting 31, you're getting 35, you're getting 40. And all of a sudden you've worked up into 400 to 500 calories and you're going, oh, well, I don't know why I can't lose weight. It's because you're doing things like this. And one thing I wanted to say too, is especially that helped me a lot was not being restrictive in my diet, but substituting certain things is what we're talking about. You know, people seem to think that bread which I don't know why, bread seems to be the enemy. 
I don't know why. I don't know where this has come from. I don't know why this is such a fad for bread to be the enemy. Because I'm telling you right now that there's no way that bread is the enemy. Bread is not going to make you fat. What's going to make you fat is overeating all that other stuff. I know plenty of people who substitute bread. They say, no, I don't want bread. What I actually want is I want to eat chips late at night. You know, I get those people that I know that go, man, I don't know how I'm so big. I only eat like one meal a day. Oh, but then I go through a whole bag of chips. Like that makes sense. Anyways, that's just a different conversation. Limiting yourself and saying that I'm going to stop doing something is hard because a lot of people who want to lose weight, and especially what happened with me, is that I try to cut something out and it never really seemed to work. It never really seemed to have any benefit because what what did I be what would I what would I do? I'd be going back to eating bread two weeks later. You know, most people cut out bread and think that oh okay, that's going to make me fit slim. That's going to turn me from like this to like this. And that's not going to happen. You're not going to go from a big gut to a small gut by cutting out bread. While you might feel less bloated and you might feel a bit better with yourself, what's going to ultimately take you to this size is substituting things for 100 calories. Bread, you can get smart bread. And I know it's they're gonna, there's going to be the, com- the comments of, oh, you got to go for healthy food and this food isn't as good. But what I'm trying to say is that certain things aren't the enemy. You know, some people can live off a richly dense food and some people can't. Like sometimes like whole wheat bread or if you go for whole wheat bread, you're looking at like 200 calories a slice. So if you want a peanut butter sandwich, you go for 200 calories plus 200, you get 400 calories just in bread alone. Plus then you want to throw in peanut butter, which is 90 calories a tablespoon. Okay, so now all of a sudden we're at 490. If you use a single tablespoon of bread or a tablespoon of peanut butter, you're at like five, six hundred calories for a peanut butter sandwich, which is completely ridiculous. If you had to use whole wheat, here's the neat thing: whole or smart bread or whatever white bread you normally have, the benefit of it is it's usually only like 150 to 160 calories for two pieces. Two pieces of bread, and they think bread's the enemy. Bread's not the enemy. Chips is your enemy. High dense calorie foods is your enemy. And that's what's stopping you from losing the weight that you want. It's what's stopping you from your body making, it's, it's what's stopping you from having the dream physique. It's what's stopping you from being the person that you want to be is eating the chips, is eating the heavy dance candy, is eating that certain thing. You can even have candy. I have candy. Listen, I'm not one to sit here and say that don't cut yourself out. What I'm saying is find the substitute. Some candy you can get for 300 calories of egg, right? Or you can get candy, which is 140 calories for 15 to 20 pieces. And 15 to 20 pieces of like raw candy is going to be a lot more satiating than 300 calories for a bag of fuzzy peaches. I'm telling you right now, coming from an ex-fat person, that 300 calories goes by very fast in a bag of fuzzy peaches. I'll take another one of those, please. Thank you. You can see how quickly things like that add up. You want to treat yourself on the weekend. You go for 300 calories and fuzzy peaches. You go for maybe 60 to 100 chips. I don't know how many you're going to eat, but you can see how quickly that adds up. You go 270, you're now at six. You're now at 900 just off of a half chips and a bag of fuzzy peaches. You can see how quickly things like this add up, right? So that's why I wanted to say that high calorie dense foods is going to leave you feeling less satiated and wanting more. And that's what we don't want. If we want to lose weight, we want to feel full and we want to feel like we're actually satisfied. It's the one thing that people get wrong is that they think that, oh, you know, I need to cut out bread and I need to cut out this thing or the other thing. Stop cutting out bread. And what you really need to do is cut out the high calorie dense food. Stop eating chips. It's not giving you anything. It's not helping you at all either. One thing that changed my life specifically. If you want a little bit of a backstory, I was exercising a lot. And when you exercise a lot, you burn a lot of calories. And this is the one thing that I wanted to explain to you. Move more. Right there. That if we could sum up this video in one word, it would be that. Move more eat less. It should be the title of this video, but it's not. You need to be able to move more. See, when I was losing my weight, I was doing two hours of cardio a day. Now, some of you might think that's crazy, but when you play football, it's different. Two hours of cardio a day is normal. You know, you train from three to five and you go home and it just ends up becoming routine. But one thing that kept me stuck was not moving enough. 
not being able to get up and go for a walk, not being able to move around my house. You know, it got to a point where instead of picking up my phone from the charger, having to go across the room and pick my phone up, I take my charger over here, charge my phone where it was convenient for me so that I didn't have to pick it up. I didn't have to walk across the room or maybe I'd roll my chair across the room. You know, my phone was over here and I take my chair, which was here and I would roll over to this side. I wouldn't actually get up and walk, but doing those certain things, getting up and actually physically moving is gonna change your life. You gotta be able to get out and go for a walk because people forget that this thing right here, the sun is incredibly healthy for you who's down here hanging out. You wanna feel good, you wanna feel like, you know, you've done something for the day, go out on a walk. Go out on a run, go out on a bike ride, go play soccer, go play basketball, figure out what it is that you like to do, cheat the system, find something that you like. One thing that I found really beneficial for me is what, my mother's a runner, okay? My mother likes to run, she's run many marathons in her life and this is her running. But here's the thing, I don't like to run, so why would I run? Yeah, I've got someone in my house who could train me. Yeah, I got someone in my house who knows how to run and is gonna teach me good form, but I don't like to run, so why would I do it? If you don't like doing a certain thing, you're not gonna to wanna to do it. So what did I do? I hopped on the old, this is gonna look so ugly, this is the bicycle. I'm still getting my cardio in, I'm still moving my body, I'm still getting outside, but I was tricking my mind into doing work that I actually enjoyed while reaping the same benefits as running had. I didn't have to run, I didn't have to not look forward to doing something, I tricked my mind and said, you know what, I'm going for a bike ride today. And I did, and I enjoyed it, and it was fun, and it was something that I like to do. If you can trick your mind into moving more, while doing something that you actually enjoy to do, you will go out there and do it. It's a gold mine, it's a trip. This is what actually led me to do it. You know, I didn't like to do two hours of cardio a day, and if I could go back, I would not do two hours of cardio a day. I would move more, but I wouldn't do it to that extent, because what happens is you kind of get drained, you kind of get bored out, and you don't want to do it anymore. See, what happens is, is, think about it this way. You've got a pool, okay, and you've got a diving board. And this is you jumping off into the deep end. This is you taking the plunge into actually going after what it is that you want. In this case, losing weight. But what happens is if you don't know how to swim, you're going to die jumping off into the deep end. You're not going to want to do it anymore. Why would I want to do this? But if we can figure out a way to teach you how to swim first, if you're out there and you're starting in the small pool and you're working your way up into the deep pool, well, you're gonna understand it. If I jump off and say that I'm gonna make you do two hours of cardio a day and I make you jump off into the deep end, you're not gonna understand it. It's not gonna make sense. But if I teach you how to do one hour of cardio a day, 30 minutes of cardio a day, 10 minutes of cardio a day when you never used to do it, well, then all of a sudden you work your way up from the shallow end to the deep end. Now you're starting to do more. So one thing I would highly suggest you do, and one thing that I did that helped me a lot, was you need to wean into certain things. You need to move more, but you need to move more rapidly in a, in a successful pace. It doesn't have to be jumping off into the deep end. It has to be weaning and getting onto it and actually doing the thing. One may say building the habit. I really wish I had to build the habit first. Because what happens is, is if you jump off into the deep end, you're not going to want to do it. I know tons of people who have gone to the gym, who have done certain things, and they can't continue on because they're so sore. They don't feel good. They never had this experience in their life, and they haven't built the habit. See, we build a habit. It takes us a few days for us to be able to build the habit. But if I get you to jump off into the deep end, you're not going to build the habit because you don't want to. The only people who are going to build the habit are the people who really want it. If you, you need to really want it to go after this. And if you jump off into the deep end and you don't want it, you're not going to want to do it. But if I can get you outside for 10 minutes a day, perfect. 10 minutes a day. You have 10 minutes to spare. You have 10 minutes to go outside and walk to your mailbox. You have 10 minutes to go outside and pick weeds in your garden. You have 10 minutes to go outside and clean your garage. You have things around the house you can do, but it's just about moving more. It's about getting active. It's about becoming active, enjoying a healthy lifestyle. I really wish I had to move more in my life because if I had to move more, I would have lost more weight. I would have been more active. People want to show off the biceps and people want to show off the chest and people want to show off the forearms and the legs, but people forget that the heart is a muscle. This right here is the most important muscle of them all. And this thing right here is going to keep you alive and it's going to keep you healthy. Don't forget you need to train your heart too. So move more. 
Stop sitting around. Go for a walk. Maybe stand up while you're working. Find a way to trick yourself into doing more activity that you actually enjoy. I, it kept me stuck for ages because I would sit down for hours. I would play video games and I would sit there and I would sit there till I went to bed. That was it. Good night. See you. We'll see you tomorrow. Move more. You'll reap the benefits in more ways than another. You'll start to slim down. You know, one thing that I really wish I had it done was move more. And enjoyed it too. You know, looking back on it now, I'm glad I did it, but I didn't enjoy the things that I was doing. You know, doing two hours of cardio a day, especially football where you're running lines and you're running around the field and doing drills. I didn't really enjoy it. I wish I had it done more. Exciting things like ride bikes or, I don't know, work towards something, clean the garage. I really enjoy cleaning. That's half the reason I started the detail business, but anyways, that's what it is. If I could go back and change another thing, something that I wish I had have done, but I didn't, is to not, not lose too much weight. Now, this is an interesting one because this is person specific. And the reason that I say this is because I went from 220 to 150. And now my frame at 220 wasn't the biggest, but I was still big. But when you cut down from 220, 220 to 150, you go from, you know, being a bit broad in the shoulders to being a bit less broad in the shoulders. You know, my wrist, I, that's the first thing I noticed is my wrist were really, really skinny. I was extremely skinny. And what I wish, because what happens, and I need to organize this, what happens is you go from wanting, wanting to be skinny to wanting to be mus. That's what happens. You go from wanting to be skinny to wanting to be muscular. What happens is, is when you go from wanting to be skinny to wanting to be muscular, you have the thought that I want to lose as much as possible. So you're thinking, okay, I'm going to cut all the calories. I'm going to start moving more. I'm going to start doing this, that, and the other thing. But then when you get to that point where you're at 150 and you're skinny and you're tired and you look at yourself in the mirror thinking, thank goodness I'm finally skinny, you get caught into the trap of let's go to the gym. And this is a good trap to be caught in. But what happens is, is when you lose all your weight and you're that skinny, it's a lot harder to put on an extra 20 pounds because what happened with me was, is I had a bad case of body dysmorphia. I would assume that's how it's spelled. I had a very bad case of body dysmorphia because what happens is, is when you go from being extremely overweight to being extremely skinny, you don't want to become overweight again. You know you never want to go back to that certain state. So when you go from... 150 to now you're saying, oh, I want to go to the gym. Let's go to the gym. And now you want to get to like 170, 180, 165. Well, that means that we have to increase our weight. And how would I want to increase my weight if I have body dysmorphia and I don't want to put on any weight? What I'm saying to you is that if you have the idea you want to become skinny, you know you want to go to the gym after, why don't you go from saying that I'm going to lose 70 pounds to I'm going to lose 50 pounds? And this is subject from person to person because if you're 300 pounds and you want to go and be muscular, what I suggest you do is cut down to the 220 weight, cut down to the 210, 215 because that's a very heavy weight depending upon how tall you are. If you're six foot four, it's not. If you're 5'11", it's pretty heavy weight. Let's be honest for a sec. But if you're 300 pounds you're not gonna get really lean at 280. You're not gonna even get really lean at 250, obviously depending upon height. So you gotta come down a bit. But what I'm saying is if you're around the range that I'm at, 220, 240, 200, I obviously depending upon what your stature is, like you're gonna look pretty big at 200 if you're 5'2". You get what I'm saying, <laughs> all, the, all the jokes intended. Why don't you say instead of losing this much, I want to lose a bit less or a bit more, less I guess is in the sense. So now I actually just want to lose 50 pounds because I guarantee you 
Now you won't have that gross body dysmorphia that you do. You know you don't want to gain weight. You know you don't want to put more on, but you're starting off at a salt, more solid foundation. That was the issue. When I was 150, I had no foundation to start off of. I was completely skinny. I had to build it all back up. So I had to work through this body dysmorphia. I had to work through the, the pains and the struggles of coming up and actually looking big in the mirror and starting to see my first vein and this, that, or the other thing, yada, yada, yada. <clears throat> if I was to do it again, I would have probably dropped 40 pounds. I would have probably dropped 30 pounds. I would have started at a bigger thing because we all want to get bigger. When we go to the gym, the, benefit, the thing that we all want to do is we want to be muscular. And to look and go from 220 to 150 and look muscular at 150, it's pretty difficult because your arms are tiny. You don't look muscular. Some guys can pull it off, but me being six foot, you can't pull off being muscular at 150. It just doesn't work like that genetically. So I would have not lost all that weight. I would have dialed it back a bit. I probably would have went to 170 or 180 and leaned out from there. I would have cut the cat, cut some calories, cut the cows is how I would have done it. I would have cut the cows to get to 180. Once I'm at 180, what I would have done was start to increase. And I'm sorry, this isn't good. I have my coffee in my hand. I would have increased the calories so that I got to the point where I knew I had my maintenance, I had this, that, I had that. I would have cut the movement, because what happens is to lose weight, we have to move. I would have cut the movement. So we got increased cows, cut the movement, and once I got to that point, I would start hitting the gym. And that is where the money is. When you start hitting the gym, when you've increased your calories, you've cut the movement and you start hitting the gym and you're at that 170, 180, that's where the money is. It's so much easier to lean out at a decent weight than it is to build the Rome in a day. That's the issue. People think... Ooh. People think that you can build Rome in a day. You cannot, you will not ever be able to build Rome in a day. You're going to lose all your weight. You're going to feel good that you're skinny. And then you're going to want to build Rome in a day. You're going to want to get back up to 180, 170, 160 or whatever it is. And you're going to go, man, I really want to work out. Well, you're going to have to work out, but you're not going to be able to build this room in a day. You're not going to be able to look good overnight. You're not going to be able to lose weight overnight. And that leads into the other thing is that this stuff does not happen overnight. That was a big issue that I ran into recently, or not recently, when I was losing my weight, is that I thought that it would happen overnight. It takes time. Seven months is fast. Don't get me wrong. I went to the extreme. I did things I shouldn't have, which was stop eating. And I will talk about that. But it doesn't happen overnight, and it never will happen overnight. See, the issue is, is we live in a society that wants things now. I want this now. I want this now. You will never ever have something overnight. It not happen over night. This right here, if you can follow this rule, it does not happen overnight. You will outwin every single person because people can't wait nowadays. You have banks where you can pull money out in one second or 10. Well, let's do 10 seconds. You can pull money out of banks in 10 seconds. You can have hot food in two minutes. You can have any info you need in seconds. Things like this happen fast, and we've been led as a society. Oh, and one thing I also forgot, you can have dope, I mean, in seconds. You can literally go from laughing to crying in seconds. I'll just leave that for purposes. 
it's not going to happen overnight. You are not going to lose weight overnight. You're not going to gain weight overnight. You're not going to feel good tomorrow. You're not going to feel good now. You never will. And that's the thing is that stuff like this takes time. If you can follow this one rule that it does not happen overnight to heart and you can take it to court and you realize going into this that it doesn't happen overnight, you win. Because what happens is people are led to believe that it does happen overnight. People are led to believe through programs and through people on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube saying that, oh, follow my plan and you will lose 70 pounds and 30 days. It doesn't happen like that. It doesn't work like that. I was one of the few fortunate people to have lost that much weight in that little of time. People think seven months is a long time. Seven months is a pretty quick time. That's under a year losing half of my body mass. Get out of here. That's quite a long time or that's quite a quick time. Sorry. I was one of the few fortunate people that had that happen to them. You might not be so lucky or you might be lucky. I don't know what it's going to be and what it's going to be like for you. It depends on how much you, info you take from this. But I'm trying to tell you that stuff like this doesn't happen overnight. It's going to lead you to doing things and, and going back to your old ways. It's, sorry. It's going to lead you to going back to your old ways. It does not happen overnight, nor will it ever, and nor is it going to ever in the future. But the benefit is, is if you realize that it doesn't happen overnight and none of the, 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 the real dopamine happens right away, You've outworked everybody, you beat everybody because now when you go to do other things, when you go to pursue, pursue, and I'm sorry for my spelling, your dream slash goals, you don't care how long it takes for you to have that thing happen because you've lost your weight, because it took time and because you were willing to see it not happen in a night. You now go into your life and you say, I'm going to pursue my dream. I'm going to become a YouTuber. I'm going to become a TikToker. And you can actually win because you're not will you're not wishing upon a star for it to happen tomorrow. You know that things take time and you know that good things are going to happen eventually, but it's just a matter of when. So you go to do this and you win because not many people can see it through for a year. Not many people can see it through through two years. So that's a benefit if you realize that it doesn't happen overnight. Man, oh man, I'm making this thing black. I'm going to have to give this a really good clean. Maybe we'll switch to blue in a sec. You know, I wanted to give you a little tidbit for the people that are still watching this video, this longer format video with little editing. And I'm sorry for all my stuff. <laughs> oh my goodness. Everybody still lives with a bit of body dysmorphia, okay? One, I wanted to give you guys a quick story. I had recently bought my laptop. And when I bought this laptop, I was introduced to these two really nice fellas, one of them being a personal trainer and one of them being a front desk worker at a local gym. The front desk worker at the local gym didn't know if he wanted to work out, but the personal trainer was telling me, man, I really want to get this guy to the gym. What I said to him was, everybody at the gym has body this more P H I A. That's the benefit. Everybody that goes to the gym has body dysmorphia. This is the nuggets you're gonna find in my longer format videos if you can stick through it and watch it. Not many people are willing to say this. It might not be common knowledge to you, but everybody in the gym has body dysmorphia. I'm gonna open up about mine here. I can't believe I'm doing this. For instance, as I take my shirt off, because I was bigger, because I was in, not overweight, well, I was overweight, I have a little bit of gyno in this nibble. That's the issue. But I go into the gym knowing that I have that form of body dysmorphia. So what do I train a lot more than other things is chest, and I train it harder. Now, I don't train it more frequently. I train it once a week as most of my other body parts, but I have that body dysmorphia, so now I live with it. I'm at the gym because I want to get rid of this body dysmorphia. I think my arms are small, and that's just the way it is. I look at my arms, and I think they're small in comparison to other people. So I go to the gym wanting to build my arms. I'm opening up about the body dysmorphia to leave you guys with the feeling that other people are at the gym for the same reason. The guy that you think is completely huge and who has those big biceps and those broad shoulders that you want and who looks like a gorilla who's an absolute tank and a freak probably looks at himself in the mirror and thinks that he is a little tiny stick figure and that's the benefit of going to the gym when you don't want to go to the gym you need to understand that this right here is going to set you free. You've been in a jail for so long and you've been feeling so bad for so long thinking that everybody at the gym is watching me. Nobody at the gym 
cares? Everybody is at the gym for the same reason. We're all there because we don't like a certain part of our body. We're all there. That's that's the, that's the truth. I just set you free. You just gained five hundred dollars worth of knowledge right there. I could have easily sold that course for five hundred dollars. Everybody is at the gym because they have some form of body dysmorphia. You got to feel lucky. Go and bless your friends with it. Go and bless yourself with it. Go to the gym free of guilt. Now go to the gym free of free of fear of being judged. Go to the gym free of this this fear of stepping into a world you don't know. Everybody at the gym is there for the same reason. You're gonna go into the gym and you're gonna see a guy that looks like a gorilla and a girl that looks really good and you're gonna think, man, oh man, I wanna be like them, but they look in the mirror and think they're small. It's the way it is. Let me put my shirt back on. That, when I learned that, and this was through the mistakes that I made. I'm not wanting to go to the gym early enough. I wish I had have known this. Like that is literal gold. That set me free once I learned that everybody at the gym has something that they don't like about themselves and something they always want to improve upon. <clears throat> everybody at the gym has body dysmorphia. It's such a good lesson. It'll set you free. One thing that I struggled with at the beginning, and you guys might too, is fasting. I know that looks ugly, but the one thing I struggled with the most was fasting. This is the thing that actually helped me lose my weight in the beginning was not being, or was being able to go without food for 12 to 18 hours. And I know it sounds extreme, but one thing that set me free was being able to say no to food. Food never overcame me. See, people live with the idea that food is bigger than them. Understand, Myron Golden said it best, it was actually his father, that he was talking about getting rid of a bolt in a car and he said, we're gonna get this rusty bolt out, the bolt doesn't have a brain, we have a brain. Food does not have a brain. Food triggers your brain into wanting it, but you can overcome your addiction to food. Your food, your food is an addiction. The way that you eat is an addiction to food, but we need to understand that we have a brain, the food doesn't, we can say no. And that's what fasting helped with, is me being able to finally say no to something that has gripped me for many, many years. If you can become bigger than your food, if you can say to your food, no, you don't control me anymore, you've won. You've beat the game. You're doing better than 90% of people out there because people are tempted by food and people are tempted by nicotine and people are tempted by drugs and whatever it may be. But if you can say no to one thing that's gripped your life, specifically food, you've won. Gigi. The thing I struggled with at the beginning was, is I would try to fast for too long. It's like jumping off into the deep end, right? We, uh, you want to fast, they tell you to fast for 16 hours a day or whatever it is. If you've never fasted, good friggin' luck not eating for 16 hours. If I was, when I was 220 pounds and they, someone told me don't eat for 16 hours, I would have laughed at them in the face and said, you're freaking crazy. You're an absolute moron. I'm going to eat in 16 hours. And that's where the benefit of weaning into it, learning how to fast. First time I want you to do it, I want you to do it for six hours. You can absolutely go without food for six hours. And I know you can go for food without six hours. How bad do you want it? Well, you better want it bad enough to not go for food or go without food for six hours. Okay. You do that for a week. I'm literally giving you guys a thousand dollar course right here. You go for six hours. Next week, I want you to go for six and a half or seven if you're feeling very confident. You're going to go for pretty much a whole work day without eating. Maybe you want to do it on the weekends. Maybe you want to do it Saturday, Sunday. Maybe you want to do it, what the heck? There's an Elantra N. We're keeping that in the video. <laughs> um, yeah, if you're feeling good, you want to do a six, and, six to seven hours a week. Perfect. What happens is, is you want to keep increasing. Next, you're going to do eight. Next, you're going to do 10. Whatever it is, you want to increase in incremental things because it's like going to the gym for the first time. I'm not going to have you do my workout routine. I'm going to have you do certain things so that you're feeling 70% strong. You're feeling 70% weak because that way we can keep you doing the certain thing. If I tell you to fast 16 hours a day and you do it for a week, you're not going to want to keep doing it. You're going to get tired of it pretty friggin' fast. You're going to be like, this isn't for me. I can't do it. And you're going to be really tested. If you're one of the people like me and you're one of the people like David Goggins, go for 16 hours and test your mental game. 
That's a fun test. You want to see how strong you are? Test if you can seriously go for 16 hours. Because if you can go for 16 hours straight without food and you're actually feeling confident, you've won. You're there. You can lose the weight. You're a special person. But it's not to say you guys can't lose weight. It's just you have to work into it because you can lose weight. It's just working into it. This is the way that I would have taken if I was actually going back and doing it. I would have started off with six. I would have started off with eight. I would have started off with 10 because it builds the routine and it builds the habit. You do it for 16 hours. You do it for a couple of days. You're not building the habit because you're going to want to quit. You're going to want to quit pretty freaking fast. But then we eventually work up. We're going to be going for maybe that one meal a day. And if you go for that one meal a day and that's all you eat, you eat a supper and it's a chicken breast and it's I don't know, this is going to sound cliche, maybe it's chicken breast and rice and maybe a little ice cream on the side for dessert. You're still underneath your calories. You're still moving more. Maybe you say you're still exercising or whatever it is. You're eating your one meal a day. That's what helped me really lose my weight is I was eating one meal a day. I was going pretty much OMAD. That's what I was doing. I was fasting for 16, 17, 18 hours a day. I don't know how long I was truly fasting because it's been years. But I was doing that. I was going for the one meal a day. I was still having, I was still able to eat my ice cream. And we just went off of that. This isn't... One thing we need to understand is that this is not fitness advice. This is not advice from a doctor saying, hey, do this and you're going to lose weight. This is advice from what happened with me and things that I would change. So we need to put that into terms. I am not a fitness influencer. I'm not an expert. I'm just somebody who lost a lot of weight and wants to share my story with the world. So don't take this as this is going to work for you because this might not work for you, but it's what worked for me and I know it can help a lot of people out there. That fasting truly changed my life because being able to say no to a certain thing (laughs) means that you're bigger than the thing and it means you're in control and it's one of these most powerful feelings you've ever felt in the world. Be able to fast. Be able to say no to the food. It builds good skills because it means that, hey, if you're riding a struggle bus, you can go without food. I'm one to say that if it ever came to the point where I wasn't able to afford food, I know what I could do. I could go without food for, I could go one meal a day and have a really cheap meal and I'd be saving a lot of money. It's just the way it is. And some of that stuff comes naturally. For somebody who struggled, they know that sometimes you can only afford or you can only eat one meal a day and they've been doing that for their life. And hey, it is what it is. These are some of the things that I would have done different. And I hope they kind of set you straight and I hope they kind of gave you something to work off of because had I known this information, I would have, (laughs) I would have won. I mean, honestly, it would, it would have been exactly what I needed because what, what sucked at the beginning of this, what sucked the most was that I had no one to go to. I had no one who had shared the same experience as me and I had no one to relate to. And I find having a story to relate to helps, especially, you know, knowing that, I'm not alone and somebody else is going through the same thing, it'll change your perspective on things. It means and it gives you a light to say, somebody else has done it, I can do it. And I'm glad if I could be that story to you today, knowing that I went from 220 pounds to 150 in seven months, and it is possible for you. Anything is possible. This needs to be highlighted. Anything is possible in life. Don't let anybody tell you differently because you too can lose the weight. But what it's going to come down to is how bad do you want it? This right here, how bad do you want it? Is the question you should be asking yourself when you first start something. How bad do you want it? Because anything is possible. That weight you want to lose, how bad do you want it? That dream job you want, how bad do you want it? That financial security, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want a kid? How bad do you want a girlfriend? How bad do you want a boyfriend? How bad do you want to look like Arnold? How bad do you want to look like 
Ronnie Coleman, how bad do you want it? If you can ask yourself and you can figure out the answer for yourself, how bad do you want it? You will set yourself straight and you will have a goal to work towards. Because when you say, how bad do you want it? As bad as I want to breathe, shout out Eric Thomas, you'll win. You can't physically lose if you want it that bad. There is no alternative universe where you lose if you want it that bad. You may fail, you may have setbacks, but you will not lose. That is the thing. That is plain facts. You will not lose if you ask yourself, how bad do you want it? And you have a strong enough answer. That's the backbone. That's what made me lose my weight right there is I wanted it so bad. I went to bed for years, 16, 17, 18 years of my life wanting to be skinny, wanting to wear skinny jeans, wanting to have the girls, wanting to wear shirts and not have a big gut sticking out. I wanted it that bad. And that's how bad you need to want it yourself. How bad do you want it? Ask yourself that question. That's a thousand dollar question right there. How bad do you want it? If you want it that bad, you'll change your life. It's a longer format video. Let me know how you like it. Let me know if you enjoyed it. Let me know if you like the free information because I want to give you guys free information and I have things in the pipeline that I'd like to talk about. If you enjoyed it, comment down below, share your experience, share something you learned, share something you want to share with other people because there's going to be people viewing this video who are willing to lose weight. Share the tips you have with them. Let's make this an info. Let's make this a form for how to lose weight and things that you did to help people lose weight or help yourself lose weight. I'm losing it right now. I'm not being able to speak. But what did you do that other people didn't do to help lose weight?